Alright guys, what is up? Today I'm going to share with you 5 great tips in Mario Tennis Aces to get you ready for the big leagues. Different types of shots of different counters. I'm going to go over these quite quickly and it may sound a bit complex at first but it's quite easy to pick up when you start playing. So drop shots are countered by topspin shots which are red or A on your remote. Flat shots which is Y on your remote and the purple shots are countered by flat shots, is strangely enough. Lob shots are also countered by flat shots and they make it really hard to recover from. So if you get a charged up flat shot against your opponent's lob shot, it is absolutely great for you. Slicers, which are blue or B button on your remote, are countered by topspin, which is again the red one. And finally, the reverse is true, so topspin is countered by slicers. So quite simple, pretty much purple counters purple, red counters blue. Blue count as red, and then drop shots are counted by red, and the lob shots are counted by purple. It may seem hard to put these into place, but again, when you've been playing for a while, it becomes second nature. But it's always nice to remember in the back of your mind, because they'll what enable the star to appear on the ground for you, and they'll also put your opponent in some really difficult positions and make it nice to score some easy points. This next tip is really easy to avoid, but I see a lot of people doing it online. Don't block your opponent's special shots with your own, as it will use a large portion of your meter. And it's very easy for your opponent to return it with a charged up shot, such as a flat shot, and punish you a lot. It's much better to count opponent's special shot with zone speed and try and hit it back and get a nice block. That way you'll have a large portion of your meter and your opponent will be the one in the difficult spot. This next tip is kind of a continuation of the last point. It's when to leave shots, because sometimes it is beneficial to not even to attempt to go for the ball and just give your opponent a point. It'll take some judgment to decide when to leave a shot, and it'll come with time, but here are a few examples. When you have very low energy and your opponent has used his special shot, nine times out of ten it'll break your racket because you can't use zone speed to slow it down, and you have to hit it back with such near perfect time, and if it hits to the other side of the court, it's very difficult. And this could result in a loss because you only get two rackets and two fully charged up special shots will break your racket. So it's much better just to give him the point in some cases, especially if it's the start of a game, and then just keep reserve your meter and then try and do the same to him. Another example would be if you're on 45 points and your opponent points are on, let's say, 15. It's much better to let him use all his energy on a huge special and just let it go out because he'll only be on 30 points. And then next time, if you've kept your energy, you'll be able to hit him with a zone shot or your own special and he not have enough energy to save it and you'll win the entire game. This point may seem daunting for a lot of new players, but it's to use your character's trick shots. A lot of people when they first start out do not like using them because they miss the ball entirely or they accidentally use them a few times and it scares them off and they don't want to use it. But once you get the hang of things, they're really easy to pull off and allow you not only just to save your special meter, from having to use zone speed to catch up to a ball. Well, better yet, they'll even charge it if you get a really nice trick shot with a bit of good timing. Unfortunately, and it's nice to bear in mind this, that if you do badly time one, it will use a bit of your meter, but you would have used that anyway on using zone speed to get to the ball. So it's probably best practicing for it as they are nine times out of 10 beneficial for you and really great to get to groups with. This is probably the most boring tip on the list. But when you first start out, you might want to stick with one type of character. I know it's a bit annoying getting playing online and getting beat by someone you using that character and then you're not that good with it. But they're all played so differently and it's nice to learn a few play styles. So there's six different types of classes. First of all, we have all round characters. And they are Mario, Luigi and Daisy. They have no strict advantages or disadvantages. And are really good for beginning players to get to grips with the game. I'd recommend playing... With these first, maybe five or so games, and then after that, rotating into one of the other classes to see what you like. The next type of characters are defensive characters. I don't want to start a tier list with this because Nintendo may patch characters in the future, but at the moment, these are the strongest characters in the game, and these are Bowser Jr. and Waluigi. And what these are, they have really good long reach, but they're a bit slow and a bit low powered. But they're really good. Waluigi is probably best up than it, I believe, and Bowser Jr. is better sitting back. But these are great characters to learn just because they are so strong at the moment and quite forgiving. The next type of character is the powerful character. And these have a lot of my favourite characters in it. There's only one character I prefer, which I'll go over in a little bit. But these characters contain Wario, Bowser, 
Donkey Kong, Spike, and Chain Chomp. So there's quite a few here. And the advantage of these are they're very powerful and they are hard to knock back, even with fully charged shots. But they're quite slow. Although I would say Chain Chomp is not even that slow. He's probably the easiest to use, although I prefer Bowser. But I recommend giving these a go, especially if you want to punish your opponent, because you can just smash it from one side of the court to the other and build up a lot of meter with these. I think they're quite good for beginning characters and definitely worth a shot. The next type of characters are the speedy characters, and these only have two. It's just Yoshi and Toad. Personally, these are my least favourite, as the advantage is they're really fast, obviously, as the name would imply, but they're easier to knock back. And now, speed, you may think, seems really good on paper, because you can get from court to court, but with defensive characters like Waluigi and Bowser Jr. already having the range, and having zone speed and trick shots to make up for that speed. I don't think they're that great, don't get me wrong, the advantage of these is you don't have to use your meter on zone speed as often, and if you're not as good with trick shots, they're a bit more forgiving. But personally, these aren't my favourites. However, if you're really good, don't let this dissuade you from using them, as I'm probably just not the best. The next characters on the list, there's also only two of those, and these are Toda and Peach, and these are the technical characters. And Peach is my favourite character in the entire game. And what technical does is means they've got great aiming. So if you aim a flat shot in the right hand side of the court, it will go very far to the right hand court. So you can get a bit more precision with your balls. And they also have a hidden little advantage that I've found out. That they have better special shot and zone accuracy from what I can tell. Which it comes in really handy as you can imagine. Because sometimes it is annoying when they just drop out. The only disadvantage is the same as a speedy. Where they are easier to knock back. However, I find you can mitigate that with a few trick shots. Lastly, we have the tricky characters who feature Rosalina and Boo. And what these do is every single shot you fire has a little bit of a curve either to the left or the right. You can aim it with the left stick. However, the slicers, which is B on your remote, the blue shots, they curve a lot. Especially Boo's who curves a bit more. And they are super annoying to play against when you start the game. And it seems impossible like guess game. And it just takes a lot of practice against them. But they're not too bad after the end. And the disadvantage is they have slower hits, so a little bit slower along the court. And the ball speed's a bit slower to give you a chance to return them. But those are all the characters. I hope you found this guide useful. Cheers for watching.